the Soul team, you know, that's um, th that's how we position it. It's an LLVM based toolkit for Solidity and your actually, you know, so it's Solidity on LLVM. You know, that's where the name came from. It's not very imaginative, but anyway. You know, so we are a very uh, distributed team. I live in Texas, you know, that's, uh, but most of the engineers that work on Seoul, um, they live in Taipei. And uh, um, in a minute, you're gonna, you're gonna know why, because, you know, this, uh, because a lot of this compiler talent, you know, uh, actually come from the semiconductor industry. So, you know, that's, um, that's our background is primarily in um, compilers for chips and for hardware and things like that. And also for enterprise software, I, you know, my, um, myself has a background in enterprise software. So um, high data from, uh, from our team would give a more in-depth um, overview of Seoul uh, tomorrow. That's um, he has a talk scheduled for tomorrow. So if you like what, what, you, what you hear today from me, you know, uh, make sure that you catch his talk tomorrow. So, oh, um, well, my publisher made me do it, you know, so this is a book I wrote last year and uh, uh, it has a lot of solidity and the uh, developer tools and it's probably too too much of an entry level book for this audience, but you know, I just want to put it here. Um, it's, um, it's published by Anderson Wesley in the US. So anyway, um, let's get started. So first of all, the burning questions you all want to ask is why another compiler? Why do we need another compiler? Why did we, what, what were we thinking when we started almost a year ago when we decide to write another compiler. You know, so I want to um, put up the uh, two quotes uh, Vitalik had back in 2018 that he talked about, you know, um, one of the major strengths of Ethereum or any decentralized ecosystem really is a diversity of tools and diversity of software, right? You know, it's, a, it's decentralization of software. So that's where we um, see ourselves um, in this ecosystem is to provide, uh, I wouldn't say alternative, but to provide um, some, you know, another way to do um, uh, another tool chain to, to for a pervading language like a Solidity or UOL, so that we can have multiple front end, multiple back ends, and to to have to have another toolkit um, that um, provide more stability to the ecosystem. So that's where um, you know um, where we see ourselves coming from. So what is it? What exactly is so? You know, just said it's Solidity on LOEM. So at the current state, you know, um, if you look at the released software of Seoul on GitHub, you know, there's there's three major parts. The first is we have a Solidity to Evasm compiler. Um, Evasm stands for Ethereum flavored WebAssembly, but you already knew that. So it has can compile Solidity source code to WebAssembly, Ethereum flavored WebAssembly. And the, the second aspect of it, it's it's UL to Evasm compiler. And uh, another interesting aspect of it is it generates EVM targets, the, the traditional, <laughs> the, EV, uh, you know, the, the current generation EVM targets with the help of the EVM LVM project, which is project uh, Alan Lee led. Um, so most importantly, you know, um, our position of it, it's not just a compiler that you can use out of the box. It's a collection of tools and libraries to build your own language tools in the Ethereum ecosystem. That's how we see uh, this project is going in the future. So here is a GitHub link to this um, to this project. It's second dash state slash so it's easy to remember. So um, before I go further, I I, I want to take a minute to to talk about you know why Evasm, you know that's Ethereum flavored WebAssembly. Why do we choose that as a comp compilation target? Why don't we just do EVM directly? You know, first uh, of course is that because there's already a solidity to EVM compiler, and that's it's you know and it's widely used, and we don't really necessarily want to compete with that. So you know that's uh, so from the from the get go, we we try to choose another compiler target that is up and coming. So um, um, and also because. That's um, as a team, we also build our own WebAssembly runtime, and the part of, and the mode of that WebAssembly runtime is is Evasum. So you know, so if you go to uh, our other project, it's called SSVM, it's Second State Virtual Machine. It has uh, it's a fully compliant um, WebAssembly virtual machine. It can be used on the server side and also primarily used on the server side, I would say. And it has a uh, it has a mode that's it's called Evasum mode that you can. It actually, uh, we have confirmed it passes all the stateful Evasum tests. So, you know, it's, uh, it's it passes the test suite 100%. And so with SOL and SSVM, you can actually now 
um, start a EVASM private node and use so to compile your solidity contract into WebAssembly and run it on that. You know, so it's sort of like a mini testnet. And or simply use our testnet. You know, there's a there's a testnet that we had in partnership with CyberMiles that use um, um, the old the older generation of what I call um, you know what they call Ethermint. You know the um, Tendermint Ethereum on Tendermint. And uh, then we put the uh, SSVM Ethereum in there to replace the the uh, guest virtual machine. So that's so that provides a complete end-to-end -end solution that allows people to compile from UO or Solidity source code to WebAssembly bytecode and then run this WebAssembly bytecode in an actual blockchain. So, that, so that's the work that we have done so far. So here is a demo. I'm, I'm glad it runs, you know, because I, I don't have to go, go to YouTube for that, but it's, a, it's an animated GIF. So it basically, it shows that's um, the, the, the big chunk of text that you just saw. Sorry, this goes too fast. But the big chunk of text you just saw is the compiled um, bytecode encoded into hex format. And uh, so this is um, your standard guest console that's connected to our testnet that allows, you know, that's, so it goes over again. So, so it's uh, um, it, it unlock account and put that in there and deploy it as a contract. So what contract that is? That contract is an ERC20 contract that compiled to WebAssembly bytecode and then run on the Evergon testnet using SOL. <laughs> so there's um, you know a lot of tools, uh, a multiple of tools that's, that, that we have developed so far. So it basically shows you that you can use the console to, to, to make transfers from inside the contract. So, so that's just um, you know, um, the work that we have that we have done that we can demonstrate here. So um, if you go to our, uh, our software release um, page that you can see the current status of the, uh, of the compiler. The current status of the compiler, so, so we test it. Um, so, so with every release, we test all the almost 500 test cases from, from the, the U library. And uh, we pass almost 80% of it. Um, so, here, you know, there's um, um, the text on the bottom of the page says the, the features that are currently supported by Sol. So, you know, I, there are still many features in UO that are not yet supported, that we're still working on that. But, you know, it's, uh, um, but as we have also heard that your language itself is evolving. So we definitely want a closer partnership with the rest of the um, Solidity team and your team, so so that we can have a have have a really strong roadmap that we would be able to support all those features uh, in the near future. So so currently it passes four hundred. Um, uh, it passes over close to eighty percent of all the test cases of your. And what about the Solidity front end? It's less impressive. You know, there's uh, um, Solidity has eighty testing co contract. Those are not unit. Tests, but uh, you know, four tests with you know complete contracts, and we can pass twenty-seven. Um, there's still a lot of features that are not implemented, um, solidity features that are not implemented. So, however, we have found some of the solidity contracts we can use so C to compile it to your and then use so to compile it to 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 WebAssembly. That pass that we have worked, you know, um, for for a couple of those contracts. But uh, straight from Solidity, uh, we can support one of the most commonly used contracts, that ERC20 contracts. So that's, uh, that's where um, um, the demo that you have just saw is the ERC20 contract written in Solidity, compiled by Sol, and then deployed on Eva. So below is some of the, you know, the, the text here is some of the unimplemented language features in Solidity. You know, so as, as you can see, there's still a bunch of things that's, that we are thinking about, you know, um, what's the best way to, to implement even basic features like um, return multiple value. It's still um, still on our roadmap. So um, had that high from our team going to be able to talk more about this tomorrow. You know, that's, uh, you know, um, why we choose to implement some features first and why some are difficult to do. So, and then, um, well, we just talk about um, so as a compiler tool. So as a compiler tool as of today is, um, I think, um, is 
is a prototype. So it's not yet ready for production use, obviously, because it doesn't pass all the test suites. So it's, uh, it's, um, it, it provides some interesting features. And however, going forward, what we really see um, so as a, as a toolkit, as a, a library of components that uh, other people can use to build their own languages. You know, so for instance, um, because it's based on LLVM, it's an intermediate language, so it's can, it can support multiple language frontends, right? You know, so it can, right now we have demonstrated partial support for Solidity and, so, uh, and Yule, but um, there's, um, um, you know, you wasn't binding for Rust that's, um, that can compile into LLVM, not through our tool, but can be, you know, can be mixed and matched with a Rust compiler in that way. And the, there's more than 20 languages LLVM already supports. So by, by, by building on that framework, we thought there's, there may be an opportunity for us to become um, you know, one of the tools in the, in the, in the tool chain or in the chat or, or in the tool chest that people can use, right? You know, then I put here is a, is article um, from, from uh, ETC course, Alan Lee that he talked about, he, he wrote it yesterday. He talked about building a domain specific languages using LLVM. And uh, then on the on the back end, you know, so on the front end, that we are we are envisioning a toolkit that can support have components that can support multiple programming languages. On the back end, we are envisioning the toolkit can support multiple uh, runtime targets. So we have already shown WebAssembly, and we have shown um, through EVM LVM project we can support today's EVM. And but what about? I thought more interesting use cases, or not really more interest, but you know, uh, one of the popular use cases is the non-blockchain non crypto use cases. Uh, if you look at um, um, you know uh, other projects out there, like the Facebook Libra or the you know the Chinese Central Bank project, you know the the digital RMB project, you know those are all I would say um, projects that are rooted in crypto but not blockchain based. So they use a lot of the infrastructure that come from the crypto world, like the digital wallet, the the smart contracts, the you know th things of that nature, but not necessarily blockchain based. Is there a possibility to build a toolkit that make Solidity a more of a more general programming language that can be used in those kind of scenarios? So, so here's um, you know what what do you mean? We envision with uh, with a uh, with a toolkit like so that that we might be able to do. Is to you so for instance one of the things um, you know that has going on for in the academic world for a very long time is formal verification that we you know but before blockchain come out you know it's uh, it's very few you know very little code has been actually formally verified or have that kind of security even in the in the banks you know people don't bother to do that but Solidity is probably one of the early language the first of the languages that that has a lot of tools around formal verification but. Is it possible that can can we use formally verified solidity application in cloud computing environment instead of just in blockchain? Right? You know, can we uh, set up, uh, say, a function of service, function as a service, or uh, uh, a container service on Amazon Cloud that can run solidity code, formally verified solidity code, instead of you know having to have a blockchain on the back end? You know, things of that nature. You know, that some is something that you know um, from our point of view, it's really, really, really interesting that we want to. Um, you know, uh, make our uh, make so part of the part of the bigger story um, in the Ethereum system as as a blockchain system and also in the cloud computing system. So anyway, that's uh, um, that's all I have. And uh, um, again, the the uh, the project on GitHub is GitHub slash second dash state slash SOL. And uh, um, we'd love to get hear your feedback, and we'd love to um, to have more collaboration with. Uh, with the community, and uh, I think I'm two minutes left. So you know, thank you very much. And 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 if you have questions, let's let's Wonderful. discuss. Wonderful. Thank you, Michael.